Greetings, podcast listeners. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. 52 years ago today is when the Stonewall Uprising began, the most significant event in the history of the gay liberation movement and the foundation of the modern fight for LGBTQ plus rights. The Stonewall Uprising, a series of clashes in New York City's Greenwich Village neighborhood, is now remembered as a pivotal event in the history of LGBTQ plus rights, leading to the first gay pride parade a year later in 1970, in June, which since has formed the custom of Pride Month in June. All of those who participate in the six days of unrest in and around the Stonewall Inn have paved a path for the modern-day LGBTQ plus community. Two of the most significant figures from back in the day are Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, two transgender women of colour, at the centre of the uprising. So the event is actually most well-known and titled as the Stonewall Riots, which suggests one isolated and exclusively violent event. But with the benefit of context and historical knowledge, we know that the conflicts between the New York Police Department and gay rights protesters went on for days after the inciting incident. With this in mind, I want to take you back to the early morning hours of June 28th, 1969. Stonewall Inn was a gay bar and dance club in New York City's Greenwich Village. Patrons of gay bars went there to feel safe and be themselves, and the gays who were homeless went there to seek refuge. But around two o'clock on the Friday morning, plainclothes officers entered the Stonewall Club with a warrant and closed the place as they were selling alcohol without a liquor license. The reason for the Stonewall Inn not having a license was that New York State Liquor Authority laws identified the bars as illegal and refused to issue a liquor license to any establishment that served a disorderly clientele and being gay and cross-dressing was classified as such. As a result, gay bars had to operate illegally and Stonewall was run by the Genovese crime family. Employees were arrested and customers were ordered to leave and began gathering on the street outside joined by other residents of the village, a popular gay area, and those visiting the area. They began arresting the patrons who hadn't cleared out of the bar for drinking in a space that was operating without a liquor license, and also demanded identification from those wearing clothes and makeup they considered unlawfully gender inappropriate, as in New York, sodomy was a crime, and wearing the apparel of opposite sex was also a crime. Outside, the police mistreated the patrons, as they usually did towards people who were homosexual. This was not the first time that the police had raided Stonewall, and every gay bar across New York City had experienced raids at some point, but as the events unfolded, it became clear that this situation was somewhat unique. The police were criticised by the visitors of Stonewall, residents, and straight onlookers, and the crowd of people that had gathered first began throwing pennies at the police, then beer cans, rocks, and even parking meters, leading to the police seeking refuge inside the bar, barricading themselves inside, and calling for backup. The barricade was set on fire with the police still inside the bar, and they had to use a hose to put out the fire. The first night was participated in by almost a thousand demonstrators, and several hundred police who also involved after reinforcements were called. Around two hours after the conflict peaked, the police announced that they had secured the area. The next day, when repairing the establishment, the management found that the police had taken the money from the cigarette machine, jukebox, cash register, safe, and stolen the waiter's tips. After being charged with selling alcohol without a license, the management opened the club as a free store, giving everything away. Soon, a crowd built up, filling the store and the street in front. Sympathetic tourists joined in the crowds, which began chanting slogans like, Gay power, we want freedom now, and equality for homosexuals. The police began to agitate and intimidate the crowds, who began blocking traffic on the roadway. More and more police arrived, aggravating the crowds even further. Few of the crowds began throwing the lids of rubbish bins, setting bins alight, and throwing beer cans at the police again. Then a group of six policemen dragged a boy towards a prison van and began beating him in the face and body with nightsticks, until a group of protesters brushed the police, taking the boy back into the protection of the crowd. The police then began to form a line and push the protesters away from the area, chasing some with their nightsticks and threatening to beat them. By 5.30am, the area was deemed secure and the forces were sent home, with homosexuals going to the docks to party. On this Saturday morning, 13 people, including 7 Stonewall employees, were arrested. On Sunday morning, 4 more people were arrested, although the day was much more peaceful and there was less chanting and more exhibitionism. That day, poet Allen Ginsberg and Taylor Mead visited the area. Allen Ginsberg was quoted as saying, We're one of the largest minorities in this country, 10%, you know. 
it's about time we did something to express ourselves. It was claimed that over the protests, only four people were injured, and apparently all of them were police. In the modern day, the LGBT plus community often see those who are at Stonewall, the veterans as they are called, as heroes, pioneers for the modern day rights which gay people and the LGBTQ plus community have. On that first night, Stonewall was filled with drag queens, hustlers, stragglers, older men and younger men. The uprising was led by prominent activists Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, who were trans women of colour. Johnson was one of the first at the bar to resist police intimidation, and Rivera is rumoured to have been the first to throw a bottle. The riot sparked an entire civil rights movement, and the reason why we celebrate Pride Month is June is because of the riots and the activism by Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Also, they are one of the most important reasons for the Pride Progress flag to include black and brown, to represent the significant and massive, basically, contribution of the black trans women towards LGBT rights today. Many have said that without Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera's activism and strength, the LGBTQ plus community would not have the rights that we have today. Marsha P. Johnson, who was a drag queen, said that she chose to go to Stonewall as people did not get arrested there. Marsha, along with other drag queens, had been spending years being arrested by the police for dressing up in other gay bars. Routinely, when the police were reported to be coming to the Stonewall Inn, they would take the money from the register and hide it away from the police. Then the patrons and staff would line up against the wall and were ordered to leave as the place was illegally open. After Stonewall, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera started to star, standing for street transvestite action revolutionaries campaigning politically for rights and aiming at building a community. Their purpose was to achieve equal rights for gay people as they suffered intense discrimination by the police and also they wished to decriminalise gay sex, which now has been successful as sodomy has been decriminalised nationwide since 2003. As a result of an article that the group of star people wrote, including Marsha, they were busted by the police. In an interview with Alan Young, Johnson spoke about how transvestites were often arrested. In her experience, she was charged with solicitation and direct prostitution. She spoke about the prison environment, that straight prisoners would usually treat the gay and transvestite prisoners like queens, as she said. Sadly, Rivera died at the age of 50 on February 19, 2002, as a result of complications due to liver cancer. In the newspaper The Village Voice, activist Ricky Wilshins said that, in many ways, Sylvia was the Rosa Parks of the modern transgender movement. Marsha P. Johnson, meanwhile, died on July 6, 1992, at the age of 46. Initially, Johnson's death was ruled a suicide, but in December 2002, a police investigation ruled in Johnson's cause of death, being reclassified from suicide to undetermined, and since then, her case has been reopened a number of times as a possible homicide, but no suspects were arrested. To honour the two activists, monuments are expected to be unveiled this year at Greenwich Village, near the site of the Stonewall Club. These monuments of Johnson and Rivera are set to be the first in the world to honour transgender activists. Thank you for listening to another episode of my podcast. Please share this episode with your family and friends in order to spread an LGBTQ plus education. Well, at least to the best extent that I can do. And subscribe to be notified of the next episode's release. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Bye!